you manipulate this sport. What's your take? You want me to throw stuff at Cruz? I'm not going to play that game or his brother or anybody else. I race and we do what we do. And I went out there. He had the quickest car of the weekend. I went after him and I smoked the tires. But you know what? I can't lose either way because I got the car in the countdown. And that's what Auto Club, Club and Ford paid me for. So if that's his opinion, God bless him. John, let me ask you about why was you, why did you select the right lane? Because we that's the lane that I ran the best down, Gerald. That's the lane that left, I think it was the left lane that I rattled first round and had to pedal it. Actually just won in the right. and, and, and actually just won in the right. So why do I want to go back to what I can't get down? Is there any more questions out there? I know it's coming from the 10, but God bless you. You gave a great show for the fans, and so did we. And we're moving on to the countdown. That's what Castro Ford. Auto Club, Brass Horse Samuel, Mac Tool, everybody, the Pinnell Brothers, they pay us to do and good here. Thank you, John. Daybrief? Now on the tower with Graham Light, the Senior Vice President of Racing Operations. Graham, there's a rule, can't take a dive. Is this one of these races that we're at least going to take a look at and maybe review? Uh, absolutely, we'll investigate the situation as we do in all cases like this. And the tech department went to the car at the top end. Uh, but beyond that, we're going to, uh, Dan Olson and his team and, and Glenn Gray are going to go to the force pit, look at their computer printout tapes, look at the tune-up on the car, and see if there's something obvious. Um, that we don't approve of, of team manipulation, obviously. Uh, and, and we'll look into it. We've done that in the past. ultimate ramification be? Well, the process probably take about 15 or 20 minutes. You ought to be for no. no. Undertaking to look at a computer printout and, and just see. sport you know hey I, I know that John's a little uh, he, he, he gets a little sensitive um, you know I've got I've got eight years in the bank with John I didn't I'm not and saying, you won a championship with it won a championship John was very very good to me that's not going to change anything I've got a soft spot in my heart um, but I made it I made some comments about some cars that just smoke the tires when they're getting down the track now it can happen to anyone but you got to keep in mind, I was there for a long time, so unfortunately for John, I know what's going on. I just believe, because I've grown up around this sport, I love it, I feel privileged to be making a living doing it. It's not about me getting beat by Ashley. Hey, she gave me, should we back the car up a little bit to try to get down the heat? She gave me a good whipping. I think John's upset about some other comments that I actually made, and I was correct. I was correct. So, um, I, I've, got, I've got money in the bank. If John ever wants to uh, debate anything, I'm more than willing to do that uh, reasonably, rationally. I never say anything that's not true. I I never have. It's just hard for me to be passive because this is a big race, and um, you know when cars are getting bumped out, it, you know it, it's it's an issue with NASCAR. It's an issue with all forms of motorsports. So a team owner's got 25% of the field. He's got the odds. A guy like me, hey, I'm the little guy. I cannot outspend him. I just got to speak my mind. That's all I can do. I think it's about the people that view on TV. They want to see good close racing, and these people, good people that, that pay money to to come in here. Very seriously, has been adding up and averaging some numbers and looking at this whole situation. Mike, what do you feel now? Well, I mean, you got to look at the facts, and I mean, John Force said they made their best run in the right lane. That's why they took it. Well, that was in qualifying. They ran that 410 in the right-hand lane. In eliminations, nobody in the fuel categories was taking the right hand if they had any choice. Now, obviously, it was good. Ashley Force went out there and made a good run. Now, in response to Graham Light saying they will go over there and they will look at all the data on the computer. Well, John Force, if you go out there and you set it up exactly the way it was around before and you drive it right out of the groove, 
smoke. Guess what? It's going to smoke the tires, and you didn't make a single change on the car. How are you going to prove that? I think it stinks to high hell heaven. I love John Force, but I can't sugarcoat this. Oh, come on. Tell us what you really feel, Mike. Lay it out there. Well, it was a moment. Let's take a look at the run again. I mean, John has an average reaction time of 086, and then he goes up there with a 209 light and then just drives it straight to the wall. Come on, he's a better. You watch him in the first round. He leads half the times, it rattles the tires, he pels it, and wins the race. Just as much as Nitro. Let's revisit this run because NHRA officials are, everybody is. This is what started the controversy. John Force launches off the starting line, and the front end's on the ground. I mean, he's able to drive it, but it drives it right out of the groove. You see, as soon as it gets out of the groove, it smokes the tires and starts drifting sideways. Say that tempers flares is an understatement. Tony just believes that uh, John Force is throwing the race that kept his brother out of the countdown, and he... Uh, Took offense to that, to say the least. And John took offense to the fact that he said it. Well, we can get some more definition now. Dave Reef has uh, Graham Light, who will speak for the officials. You bet earlier we saw Rich Shrek, Dan Olson, down in the pit area of John Force Racing, looking over everything. You've just uh, received the phone call. What have you determined? Well, first off, let me say that uh, NHRA will not tolerate uh, multi-teams manipulating a race, the outcome of a race of a race of this importance. So when it was all done, uh, this didn't get any better. John Forrest pushing back an NHRA official so that he can get right in Tony Pendergon's face. He should be fine for that one. Now let's go to Gary Gerald, who has Jay Force. That's right with John Force. The NHRA officials have looked over all the data, John, and uh, they have cleared you guys of any wrongdoing. Just your response to that. Well, they don't bother me coming in here. That don't bother me a bit. We're in the heat of battle out here. What bothers me is people that talk behind your back, that go on the Internet to say stuff, people that go on TV and say stuff, won't say it to your face, and then they walk by you in the staging lanes when they get beat, and they want to mutter it under the words, and you say, what? What did you say? Say it to me. Have a little spine, okay? So that's where I go on these issues, because you know what? I've had to listen to Schumacher talk about me and Tony Petragon, and I've just had enough. I'm standing up for my rights. These are my race teams. I do what I want to do. But to have to stand out there and be called names by him because my kid whipped his ass. He's been whipping her all year, and she finally gets down there once, and, and he can't even let us enjoy it. He's got to ruin it. I've had enough of him. He was my friend. He ain't my friend no more. Okay, he wants to fight. Let's see him fight this old man out on the racetrack. Okay, because I taught him. And you know what? I've never said that I gave him compliments. Well, now he stepped. He stepped on me, buddy, and he shouldn't have. Well, okay. John, you, you talked about your daughter whooping him. Let me ask, because she is going into the final for the U.S. Nationals, has a chance to win that Wally here. How do you motivate her? How do you, you know, how, because she is going up against her teammate, Robert Hyde. It's going to be a tough, tough, tough race for her. They're going to go out there just like we did before, and they're going to race. Okay, but I'm going to hear it for that if she wins, and I'll hear it for that if Robert wins. You know, I'm just, I, I'm, just I'm, I'm going to love my race cars. I'm going to love the fans. You see them out there. They take care of me. You understand? That's all I need. I just, I'm amazed with some of the people in this sport, and I'm finally speaking out. I've had enough. All right, thank you very much, John. As you can see, man, he is still highly emotional. Obviously, we saw a very heated confrontation at the far end of the racetrack a short time ago. John Force, Tony Pedregon. Tony, you've had an opportunity to get back here with your team. Maybe settle down, think about things. Does your opinion change about anything at this point? No, I, I stand my ground. I mean, I, I made some statements that, that were true. And, um, you know, hey, I love John. I really do. I, I know it's a tough thing. I, I think as, as a team owner, I mean, he's got four cars. He's got to face the music. And, and I, uh, I just disagree that... You know that, that you should be able to, you know, change the outcome uh, of a race. Um, it wasn't about Ashley beating me. You know, she beat me. I beat her. She beat me today at a better race car. Uh, it wasn't about John beating Cruz. Hey, Cruz smoked the tires. But if you go back to Brainerd when I raced Cruz, uh, you know, I, I just I believe that that is the right thing to do. I think it is. That's why people tune in to this sport. Um, you know, if they want to watch wrestling, they can go tune into wrestling. They want to watch drag racing, they tune into NHRA. I believe that. I stand behind it. And um, I just disagree with you know. With, with some other things that I think was really the cause of what the little dispute at the end of the track was.